A-level maths is a very popular subject, however that doesn't stop it from being arguably one of the hardest. A lot of people come into A-level maths having done quite well in GCSE or having enjoyed maths for a long time, but when faced with this new challenge they find that it's very difficult to kind of approach it and overcome it. However, as someone who's gotten an A star, I feel like I've managed to kind of find certain ways that make the subject a bit more manageable and kind of increased my ability to handle it and do as well as I did. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jackery and I'm a student studying in London. And in this video, I'm gonna break down some things that you can do in order to maximize the chances of you getting as high a grade as possible in maths. Now, just for reference, I did biology, chemistry, maths and psychology, as well as an EPQ and I managed to get an A star in all of them and so if you've done any of those subjects and you'd like some advice specifically on those then check out my channel I'm going to be doing the best I can to pump out all the videos around each of my subjects however if you're not doing any of those subjects then you can still check out my video on how I managed to get 5 A stars where I kind of go over some general tips on how to do well in your A levels rather than subject specific ones. Bear in mind that I did Edexcel maths now even then the advice I give you is kind of applicable to any exam board but there might be one or two things that are potentially specific to Edexcel so if that's the case then you can skip over those but I do still think this video will be helpful regardless of what exam board you're seeing. As usual timestamps will be in the description below so you can jump around and find exactly what you're looking for without wasting any time. Now tip number one applies to people who are currently in year 12 or about to go into year 12 and that's to pay as much attention as you can on year one content whether that be for pure maths, statistics or mechanic pay as much attention as you can in your first year. The reality is especially with pure maths a lot of the content you go over in first year will probably not directly turn up in the exam now that might sound a bit contradictory I've just told you to pay as much attention as you can and now I've just told you that it probably won't come up in the exam but the reason it's so important not to get complacent is that firstly year two is typically where a lot of people realize how difficult A-level maths is, especially with pure maths. Year two is a whole different beast to year one. I remember during year one, I was thinking that A-level maths was a bit of a breeze and it didn't seem as hard as everyone kind of chalked it up to be. But when I reached year two, then it suddenly hit me and I'm like, okay, now I understand why it's so difficult. Now, the reason it's so important to pay attention in year one is a lot of the difficult concepts in year two simply build on year one content and kind of go more in depth. Now year two content is already hard enough as it is. And for students who kind of slacked off in year one or maybe didn't pay as much attention as they should have, that becomes even more difficult. Common topics like integration and differentiation in year one is a walk in the park. It's very straightforward. And although some questions can be challenging, for the most part, it's relatively manageable. However, once you reach year two, chapters like differentiation and integration kind of spiral out into all these micro chapters and come up in so many different ways. Now, what I'll do is I'll kind of put on the screen all the different types of differentiation and integration that come up in year two, and you'll see how many different variations there are. And so, for example, with integration, you have parametric integration, you have integration by parts, you have integration by substitution, just to name a few. Now, if you don't understand basic integration that you go through in year one, then you'll find that when you come across those chapters in year two that are already relatively difficult, that it's just gonna add more of a challenge for you and you're just gonna struggle that much more. So pay attention in year one and don't get complacent no matter how easy it may seem. Now that doesn't mean there's anything wrong if it's not straightforward. I'm just saying that because from what I saw, the majority of the people in my class found year one content a breeze, but year two is when most of them realized that A-level maths really was as challenging as a lot of people say it is. Now tip number two is to apply what you go through in lesson and what your teacher teaches you into practice questions as soon as you can. One thing I really like about maths is that maths can always be broken down into smaller parts. No matter how complicated a question is, you can always break it down 
into separate parts and you kind of have like this multi-step calculation that you do to get from point A to point B. Whether it's an integration question, a differentiation question or whatever type of question it is, there's typically always a multi-step process to derive the correct answer. And what you'll find is that by doing practice questions, you'll see that the process is pretty repetitive and it's kind of like the same thing over and over yes you'll have one or two difficult questions but once you apply your understanding to exam questions you'll find that it's quite repetitive how you apply that understanding so the sooner you do practice questions the more you can kind of commit that understanding to memory and so when you see that type of question in an exam it will become very easy for you to suddenly switch on and think okay this is step one, this is step two, this is step three. Let me bring in all my understanding and tackle this question. That makes it sound really simple, but the reality is the challenge with A-level maths is kind of seeing a question and knowing what you have to do. So when you see a question that's integration by substitution, you should be able to look at it and think, okay, this is integration by substitution. In the same instance, if you're doing a differentiation question, you should be able to look at the question and identify whether it uses the product rule or the quotient rule or whatever. And identifying those small things and knowing what category a question falls under becomes a lot easier the more practice you do. Because in an exam, it's completely random. You could have a proof by contradiction question, one question, and then the next question could be an integration by substitution, just to give you an example. So identifying quickly what each question type is, is a very key skill. And the only way you can really get good at that is if as soon as you understand the content, you start to apply it to practice questions and you expose yourself to as many questions as you can. Tip number three is to understand how to use a graphic calculator. Now, if you're doing A-level maths and you're lucky, your school will provide you with a graphic calculator or you might have to buy your own one. But the reality is, especially with Edexcel um, maths, you kind of have to understand how to use a graphic calculator. I remember when we were first given our graphic calculators because they were so much more different to the calculators we'd already been using. When people first started using them, we had no clue how to use them. All the buttons were in different places and it just didn't seem as intuitive. But by practicing with that calculator as much as possible, which yes, will be very slow at first. As you get more proficient with it, you'll start to understand that knowing how to use the graphical calculator for its more niche features would definitely help you in the long run with answering questions more quickly and saving as much time as possible. Now, I don't have my graphic calculator with me to demonstrate because I've already done my A-levels and we had to return ours back to the school. But especially in things like statistics, for example, which is obviously a component of A-level maths, you'll find that there are certain questions which completely depend on the calculator. And so being able to understand how to use the calculator and what you need to press to get to the setting you want will be very crucial in making sure that one you can answer the question because like i said some questions you just can't answer without a graphic calculator and two to make sure that you're saving as much time as possible you don't want to be fiddling with the buttons or thinking oh what do i press this or that should be second nature and you can only kind of reach that point if you practice with the calculator there are also some kind of small things that the graphic calculator can help you with. I remember when I found out that the graphic calculator could solve quadratic equations for me, I would literally just type in the quadratic equation into my calculator and get an answer. And the reason that was so useful is it reduced the likelihood of me mistyping a number when putting it in the equation. And obviously you can't do that in an exam in the sense that you can't just write down your answer you have to show you're working out so what i'd literally do is i'd write the quadratic equation with the number substituted but instead of typing that into the calculator i would use the quadratic equation function to work out for me and then put it down on the test paper so to the examiner it looked like I worked it out using the quadratic equation when in reality I used my calculator which one saves me time and two reduces the likelihood of error and that's perfectly allowed you're allowed to use your calculator so make the most of it and understand the small tricks that you can use to save time here and there. Tip number four is to ask your teacher to go through questions whenever you don't understand a mark scheme. Now the annoying thing with A-level maths regardless of what exam board you're doing you'll find that a lot of the times the exam questions you do 
will have mark schemes that kind of skip steps now i assume the reason they skip steps is because they assume you already understand like how to do the question and you understand how they go from step one to step two to step three however if you're using questions to kind of reconsolidate your understanding and like i said in tip one apply your understanding to questions then when your understanding isn't a hundred percent then when ex mark schemes start to skip steps it can be very confusing so in those instances what i recommend is talk to your teacher what i always used to do is whenever i was doing um exam questions if there was a question that i couldn't understand the mark scheme of i would literally just email it to my teacher or send it to him via teams and he would literally work out on his ipad like every single micro step and then send it back to me and i always found that those were more useful than the mark scheme now yes there were instances where he'd do that and even then it just wouldn't make sense to me and in those cases what i'd do is i'd usually go up to him in person during school or during lesson time or after lesson and i just ask him to very quickly talk through it and most of the time your teachers will be perfectly fine with doing that and they'll be more than happy to help you if there's something you don't understand trust me with maths understanding is very important if you have a question get it out of the way as soon as possible like i said a lot of the content kind of acts as foundation for content that comes up later on and so if you leave a block of content that you don't understand then it can really come back to haunt you later on down the line when you're doing a new chapter that builds on that previous chapter tip number five is to pay attention to statistics and mechanics now this sounds like a really silly thing to say but if anyone's done a level maths or if you're doing a level maths you know that pure maths is kind of like a special segment of a level maths Pretty much everyone loves pure maths, but statistics and mechanics don't really get the same reception. I know for me personally, stats and mechanics were easily my least favorite parts of A-level maths, whereas pure was the part that I actually enjoyed. Pure maths is kind of like the maths that you're used to that kind of builds on from GCSE or like, you know, like the arithmetic style of maths, whereas stats and mechanics is, is a bit more different. Now, mechanics... I find that students enjoy somewhat because it still feels kind of like numeric math but statistics is kind of like its own section where it's, it's just a really weird chapter. However the reality is that you have to pay attention to stats and mechanics because it obviously plays a part in determining your final grade. There's no point of doing good on pure and then bottling stats and mechanics and then not getting a good grade. I didn't enjoy stats and mechanics but I still forced myself to study it because I knew that I needed to and so definitely don't neglect it. I think like I've mentioned in previous videos um, we have a tendency of revising the stuff we enjoy. We convince ourselves that we need to give it more effort because we don't understand something. And then we end up spending most of our time revising content we already understand. So don't neglect stats and mechanics, especially since in year two, it gets really complicated. And so you don't wanna have to be doing catch up for year one, especially with some of the more complicated chapters like hypothesis testing, for example. Tip number six is to have a routine whenever you're approaching a new chapter. Mass chapter can be a bit all over the place whenever you look at the textbook sometimes it's kind of like talking about multiple things at once and it can be quite hard to approach when you're thinking about how to revise it but I think having a systematic method on how you learn the content will really help make that element of revision a lot more easier and I know for me I kind of had a system in place that I found worked for me now if you have a system in place that works for you, by all means, ignore the next part. But if you're someone who is like me, who is kind of lost on how to approach revision with A-level maths, I definitely recommend this kind of um, approach where, firstly, you make sure to pay attention in class. You listen to your teachers and you take in all the information. You answer all the questions they give you in lesson and try and apply all your knowledge as best you can within that time slot. Typically, then what I do is when I came home, if I was planning to revise that chapter of a level math then i would open up youtube and i would find a video that very quickly goes through that content maybe a five to ten minute video a lot of the time because maths is such a popular subject you might even find videos that directly correlate to your textbook so 
I would do that. I would just watch a quick video to kind of rejog my memory and fill in any gaps I had from lesson. Then what I'd do is, like I said, I'd go straight into practice questions. Once I've watched the video, once I feel a bit more confident, I would do practice questions. And then the key thing is that I would then mark the questions afterwards. After I mark it, I would look through and kind of see if there's any pattern. Maybe there's a specific mistake that I keep making or a specific type of question that I keep getting wrong. And what I'll do is then I'll start to hyper focus on that. Now you can then do lots of things. You can ask your teacher for help. You can do more questions revolved around the part you got wrong. You can go back to the YouTube videos and just watch that specific chapter and kind of repeat that process until you feel very confident with the subject. And I found that using that approach made A-level maths a lot more manageable. It meant that I could revise a lot more effectively and I kind of knew what I was doing rather than just blindly opening the textbook, going through the chapter and not really understanding anything that was going in. The final tip is to do time practice once you've gotten proficient at the content and you have a good understanding. Unlike with, for example, GCSEs, A-level mass questions on average do tend to take a lot longer with some questions taking up a significant amount of time. So once you're proficient with the content, you have to be able to make sure that you can do these longer answer questions under time conditions without making silly mistakes. Like I said, a lot of A-level maths is multi-step calculation. One question will never really be just one question. There's usually five or six different steps you have to do to get the right answer. And the issue with that is that each step you have the potential of making a mistake and the moment you make a mistake on even one number it can completely derail your answer and you end up getting the complete wrong answer and losing out on a lot of marks so what you have to make sure is that under time condition you're able to do every step you need to without making silly mistakes on top of that it's good to do time practice because in instances where you may do a silly mistake you have to also be able to backtrack maybe re-attempt the question and have another go at it all within the time constraint i think the key thing that makes it so difficult is that like i said it only takes one small mistake for you to get the complete wrong answer so you want to be quick but you also want to be diligent which is something you can only practice by doing questions under time condition and with that we have reached the end of the video so if you found the video useful or you took something away from it then leave a like subscribe and let me know what you thought in the comments below a level maths is definitely a difficult subject and so you may have a question that i might not have brushed on too deeply in this video or might not have even mentioned so if you do then just ask away and i'll get back to you as soon as possible bear in mind that there will be more videos coming on my other subjects if they haven't already been uploaded and so look out for that if you you want more subject specific videos thank you so much if you made it this far that's been all from me and goodbye